So in this video, we're going to go over some of the modifications I used to enable hard limits. So before we get into the modifications I've done to my aux metal to support the use of hard limits, let's first talk about what they are and why you might want to use hard limits. So hard limits is basically using the limit switches on the aux metal as sort of a stop. It's a fail safe. So in the event you're trying to move the axis too far or let's say you're out of the shop buying ice cream, you've left your CNC mill going and something happens to the machine, an axis just carries on going, um, it hits the switch, the machine goes, ah, okay, max travel, can't go any further, and halts the cut and waits for, obviously, the user to come back, figure out what's gone wrong, and remedy the problem. And this can save you quite a bit of hardware problems, you know, you can damage bits, damage motors, burn things out, all sorts of things if your axis is trying to move out of its minimum and maximum travel area. So when I first wired up my aux metal, I just used two core light gauge wire for all the limit switches and thought nothing else of it. And it wasn't until later when I was actually able to do cuts and I had hard limits enabled that I was quickly discovering a problem that a lot of other people have experienced before me. And that is during a cut, your machine thinks it's hit one of the limit switches. In reality, it hasn't. And of course, there's a pain because it stops the cut. You've got to reinitiate, blah, blah, blah. So why, why does this happen? Well, basically, it seems to stem from electromagnetic interference with, from other cables that run next to the limit switch wires. This inducts a very small current in the copper wire. Your stepper driver then thinks one of the switches have been hit and then obviously halts the progress. So there are a couple things we can do to reduce the EMI down to a manageable level. And the first thing I went ahead and did was upgrade all the limit switch wires to shielded two-way copper wire. And here's a close look at it. So we've got our copper strands which wrap around the two internal cores. And this copper shielding wire is connected at one end to the power supply's ground. And this helps reduce a lot of the EMI. The second thing we can do is add some very low value capacitors on the outputs of the switches on the um, stepper driver board and this helps filter out any spikes or anything that's inducted in the cable. So I thought I'd give you a quick demo of how I added the capacitors and shielded copper wire to my CNCX Pro now. Uh, this is no CNCX Pro, in fact this is just a old ramps board from an old 3D printer project which I don't use. But for the time being, let's pretend that this two pair of headers here uh, is the limit switch um, headers on our CNC X Pro board. So I've gone ahead and soldered on the two wires to the legs of the capacitor and just bent them uh, 90 degrees. And then all I do is insert those wires into the header tighten up the screws and just like that we've got a mount for our capacitor and our wires are hooked up and then as I mentioned earlier the shielding copper wire that wraps around the two cores that gets connected to ground on your power supply. After I made these two modifications my problems seem to have gone away. I haven't had any more false triggers during any of my cuts. So hopefully this video if, will help you out if you do decide you want to use hard limits. So if you found this video useful, be very helpful if you can give the video a like. And also while you're down there, if you'd hit that subscribe button, it'd be much appreciated. There'd be loads more content to come. Thank you very much for watching. See you next one. Bye for now.